So let's say you want to add a file upload feature to your Next.js app. But what kind of file input will it be? A drop zone image upload like this one? Or maybe it's a multi-file upload like this one. Maybe it uploads as soon as you drop the files. How do you display the progress? Are the files big? Should you use multi-part upload to make it faster and more stable? What about your infrastructure? What are you gonna use to store your files? Will you add a CDN layer to cache your files close to the user? Do you need to create a thumbnail version of each image? What about access control? Do you need private files? Okay, my point is, adding file uploads to your app can get quite complicated, but all of that just got a lot easier with Edge Store. Let's say we wanna add two types of files to our app. One is for images like posts or profile pictures, and these should be public. The other is for user files, and these should be protected files. Only the user who uploaded it and admin users should be able to access it. So let's start with the image upload. Here we have a brand new Next.js application. This one is using the app router, but it also works with the pages router. So let's create a new API route for Edge Store. Make sure you name it like this so that it catches all the requests under the Edge Store API. Now, this file is where we will add the configuration for Edge Store. Let's start by initiating the Edge Store Builder, and then let's create our router. Here is where we will configure our Edge Store buckets. Let's name this one My Public Images and set it as an image bucket. Now you want to create the API handler. Make sure you import it from slash app if you're using the app router, or from the slash pages if you're using the pages router. Now all we need to do is create the handler and export it for the get and post requests. We also need to export the router type, which will be used to create a type safe client in our front end. And this is basically all the server side configuration we need to start uploading public images. Now let's set up the client side. First, we'll create an edge store file inside a lib folder. This needs to be a client file. Here we'll use the edge store router type that we exported from our API route file to create the context provider that will wrap our app and the use edge store react hook. Then we can go to the root of our app and wrap it with the provider we just created. Now the only thing left to finish the setup is to go to the edge store dashboard, create a new project, copy the keys, and paste it to our environment variables. Now we're ready, let's try to actually upload something. In a client component, let's start by showing a file input on the screen. Now we want to access the file we selected, so let's add a state for it and set the state every time the selected file changes. We also want an upload button. Let me just style it a little bit with Tailwind. And here is where we will add the functionality to upload the files to Edge Store. First, let's grab the Edge Store client from the use Edge Store hook and use it to call the upload function of our public image bucket. If we take a look at the response type here, we have an URL and a thumbnail URL. And that's because image buckets automatically creates a thumbnail version of the uploaded image if it is bigger than a certain size. After the upload finishes, you could run some API or server action here to save the data to your own database. But for simplicity, let's just show the data on the screen. For that, we'll need another state for the URL and the thumbnail URL. And we'll set both of them after the upload finishes. And in our JSX, we want to show here the URL and the thumbnail URL. Now, if you go to our app, select a file and click upload, we get back both links. The URL with the original image and the smaller version of the image. And if we go to the projects dashboard and open the bucket, we can also see the files here. And you also notice that the thumbnail image is not counted as used storage in your account. Ok, great, but what if we want to show a progress bar as well? Well, we can also pass an onProgress change to the upload function. Let's first create a state for the progress, and let's set this state on the onProgress change handler. Now let's just create a very simple progress bar here, just a rectangle with a border, and another rectangle inside that will fill according to the progress. We cannot use Tailwind for the width here, because it is a dynamic width, so let's just use normal inline styles. Another thing, if we change the progress from 20 to 80, you'll see that the change is instant. We don't want that. This will be too choppy. We want a smooth animation between states. So let's make it animate between states with a 150 millisecond duration. Now if we change it again from 20% to 80%, that looks much better. Now let's link it to the progress and actually upload a file here. And there we have it, awesome. 
And by the way, we don't need to do all of this from scratch every time. I just did it to show the customization flexibility of the package. But if we just go to the documentation, there are sample components there that you can just copy to your code. For example, let's use this single image component. After we run this command to install the required dependencies, we can copy the component, create a single image drop zone file and paste it here. Now we can go back to the docs, go to the usage, copy this part of the code and paste it to replace our input component. Now this looks much better. We can see the image and also clear it. And we can set a size limit in the drop zone as well. Now if we try to drop a file bigger than 1 megabyte, it will show us a validation error. But this is just front-end validation. And only for this specific input. If you also want this validation in the server side and for the whole bucket, you can add it in the bucket configuration like this. Now that we're already here, there's one more configuration I wanna do. Remember that our image can be of type post or profile, how about we add this information to the file? For this we'll need to require an input that will take a type that can be of profile or post. By the way, you need to have Zod installed for this. Now we want to use this input to set the path of the image. This will make a path like this. And this information will be saved as a metadata for the file, that you can use for filtering or for the access control logic in case of protected files. Now if we take a look at where we are uploading the file, we will see that we have an error here. This is the magic of advanced TypeScript. Since we added the input in our bucket configuration, we need to set it here. You might notice a lot of similarities with TRPC in the implemented patterns. Yes, TRPC was a huge source of reference on building this package. I'm so glad that Alex and the other contributors made such a great open source repo with so many things to learn from. But yeah, back to the code. We'll make this of type post. And if we go to our app and upload a new image, we can see in the dashboard that the type is correctly set in the image path. Okay, that's it for the public images. And by the way, all this code is available in a public repo on GitHub. Feel free to check it out if you want. Now let's start with the protected files. Since we only want the owner and the admin users to be able to access the file, we need to create a context that will have this user information. For the create context function, we want to get the user information from our authentication provider. Whether you are using NextAuth or Clerk, just search for how you can get the current user information from the server side. To make it simple here, we'll just return a hard-coded context. Now we need to add the context type to the Edge Store Builder. By doing this, we will also be required to add the create context function in the router. Now going back to our bucket configuration, we want to set the path here so that we can add the owner to it. This will create a path like this, where this is the owner's user ID. Now we can start with our access control logic. Let's start by adding an OR at the root. And for our first condition, we want the user ID in the context to be the same as the owner in the path, which will be this 1, 2, 3 we have here. Again, everything here is type safe, as you can see here. Now for our second condition, we want the user role in the context to be an admin. We can also write it like this instead. And there are also other operators that we can use. And that's it, all we need to do to add protected files to our app. Now let's create a different input for this bucket. We can copy the multi-file drop zone component from the docs, add it to our components and paste it here. Now let's copy the usage in the docs, create a new page, you can name it anything you want and let's paste the usage here. Now if you go to the page, we can start uploading files. And we can also see it in the dashboard inside our new bucket that we have protected files with that lock icon here. But we actually want to see it in action, right? So let's do the same thing we did in the image drop zone and display the links on the screen. For that, we need a state for the URLs. This time it's a list because we can upload multiple files. Now let's add the URL to the state when the upload finishes and let's map this list into links so they show on the screen. Now if you upload a new file and click the link, we can see it because we have the right permissions. But if we go back to our code, change the hard-coded context to another user, Go back to the app and refresh the page so that the create context runs again and then try to open the same image, we'll see that we don't have access to it anymore. And the best part, this access control runs at the edge without running any database queries. So you don't need to worry about bad performance for protected files. 
Okay, that's it for protected files, but since we're already here, let's see what happens if I try to upload a large file of 700 megabytes. You'll notice that Edge Store automatically splits the upload into a multi-part upload. For large files, this actually makes the upload faster and also more stable. Let me just turn off my internet here. You can see here that one part upload failed, and it is already automatically retrying that part. All this retry logic is already implemented into Edge Store, so you don't need to care about it. Now, if I turn my internet back on, the upload successfully recovers from the failed part without having to start the whole upload from scratch. Okay, next thing, what happens if I try to upload many files at the same time? You can see here that only 5 files are being uploaded in parallel, and the rest are being queued and automatically starting as soon as another finishes. The limit for parallel uploads can also be changed. We just need to go to where we are creating the provider and set this option to whatever value we want. Let's make it 2 so we can see the queue better. And here we have it, only 2 files uploading at a time. Ok, another thing I want to show you guys. Have you noticed that sometimes in forms, the file uploads start as soon as you drop the file? This actually makes the UX better because the user won't have to wait for the upload after he clicks the submit button. But it also has a drawback that if the user uploads the files and then leaves the page without submitting the form, you will end up with unused ghost files in your storage. To address that, we can go to where we are uploading the files and add an option to make it a temporary file, which will make sure these files gets deleted after some time if it hasn't been confirmed. And to confirm it, all we need to do is to run the confirm upload function inside the submit handler. Now if you go back to our app and upload some files, we can see in the dashboard that these files are marked as temporary files. And then if we go back and submit the form, then go to our dashboard again, the files are confirmed. By the way, if you're interested in using Edge Store, it is completely free to start, no credit card needed, and there is also a bonus storage for early users, so make sure you don't miss out on that either. And if you think this project deserves it, consider giving a star on GitHub, this would mean a lot to me. I really want to make this a community-driven project, so if you have any feedback or suggestions, feel free to join our Discord and share it there. And yeah, that will be it for the video, I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao,